You're listening to the Ask Ava podcast, where we give real answers to real questions from teens and young adults about relationships, consent, dating violence, and more. My name is Jessica Scoltetti. I'm an outreach and community engagement manager at Safe and Sound Somerset. We are Somerset County, New Jersey's lead organization for domestic and sexual violence services and prevention. And we have free services for everyone. So today we're here with Victor Peralta, who is also an outreach and, and community engagement manager at Safe and Sound. Hi, Victor. How are you today? I'm doing good. How are you, Jessica? Thank you for having me today. I'm doing pretty well. Thank you. Um, so we have a question here from a group that was very serious. And honestly, uh, I, I'm sure you can recall, this is a question we get all the time um, as we're working with youth and adults as well. Um, so the question is, what if my partner threatens suicide if I leave? And again, we hear this, I, I should say this, we hear this at every single middle school and high school that we do programming for, um, for healthy relationships and dating violence. So really a concern. Um, so what do you think, Victor? What, you know, what do you, how is this question landing for you? Yes, it's it's. Uh, thank you for having me again. It, it's um, if an abuser claims to be suicidal, if you ever feel like your partner or loved one is in imminent danger of suicide, uh, it's it's something serious. And if that is the case, uh, please call nine one one or the national suicide hotline if that's the case. But if the threat is less imminent, in my opinion and you're still concerned about their safety, you can call the police, you can call a non-emergency line, like I said before. Uh, it, it's, it's a very, very touchy topic because uh, threatening suicide uh, as a form of power and control also, especially when they have convinced you that if committing suicide, is going to be your fault. Mm -hmm. And, you know, how do you deal with something like that? And that's why I mentioned that in the beginning, because uh, at the end of the day, a threat like this is, is basically a form of emotional abuse and co cohesion control, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, talking to a lot of experts in my past, statements like this, not that I claim to be an expert, but I'm an expert in the, to in the topic, in the work that we do, but I am by all no means, I am not a certified doctor or anything like that, or psychiatrist, uh, but I do believe that it's kind of like a, 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 a cries for help, if you will. Uh, mm -hmm. Suicidal threats are being are being made, in my opinion, to manipulate uh, the person to to get them to do what they want to do. Uh, mm -hmm. And and you know, abusers know that by threatening suicide, they're putting their victims in a position where they have no choice but to respond with care, concern, and emotional support, which is mm -hmm. a good thing. But at the same time, uh, if the abuser is threatening you or putting you in a situation where uh, you don't know what to do because now you're in a situation where you're thinking that person's going to harm themselves, uh, then you have to take the right steps to make sure that that's the case or not the case. Absolutely. Um it's really hard. I think you, you, you're absolutely right. Like some people hesitate to act because, you know, someone might just be joking or like, they're not sure if it's serious, but we definitely, I definitely agree. Like, even if it sounds just like a joke, get help. Um, and we can talk a little bit more about that at the very end. Um, like you said, you know, I think that's, that's really has to happen right away. Um, but I want to also emphasize what something you said about like, you know, the power and control, this is an abusive relationship, even if it's not physically abusive, which a lot of people think is the only kind of abuse, which is not true. Um, you never have to stay in a relationship you don't want to be in. A lot of people think they have to stay if their partner is threatening things. You do not have to stay. And one thing that we can offer as an example is if you call or text the Safe and Sound Somerset helpline, we can actually safety plan with you. So that's a that's a personalized plan. If you're if you want to leave and your partner is threatening things that are very serious, hurting someone, you know, hurting themselves, 
you know, we can work with you to create your own personalized plan for how to get out safely. Um, so that's, that's one thing I wanted to bring up is like, I, you don't have to stay just because they want you to stay. That is absolutely true. And I, I love the fact that you mentioned power and control, uh, because basically they, you know, we have to be careful because they have convinced you, meaning that person. They have the abuser has convinced that person that by committing suicide, it's going to be your fault. And can you do what I say? Otherwise, it's going to be your fault. And, and that is why our resources like even this podcast today, obviously, it's it's a very important to to kind of give you all the tools. It's a, a, this podcast, in my opinion, is a toolkit or at mm -hmm. least part of a toolkit and so that you know what to do, the steps, and you don't feel alone. Uh, threats are emotional abuse and you shouldn't be in that situation mm -hmm. and you should know what to do to get to get help yourself because you might need help yourself uh, it, so that somebody can guide you how to get out of that situation mm -hmm. uh, but yeah uh, it, it's a very uh, hard topic to talk about but it's a very needed topic to talk about it's i think and and you mentioned this the part about not being alone it's so common and it doesn't just come out of nowhere you know this is something we know um as professionals and and experts in the field of abuse is that it it doesn't just happen randomly like usually there's other actions that come before a threat of of suicide, right? There's other controlling things that this person has done, right? And that's what categorizes it. That's what makes it a pattern of power and control. Um, I, I I usually bring this story up for a reason um, because people connect with it. Um, this is an example of how common this is. Um, we were I was at my very first presentation in a high school five years ago now. Uh, and we gave this example um, to get the students to discuss, we were gonna discuss together um, as somebody had, had threatened suicide to their partner and the room went completely silent. And obviously it's a difficult topic. So we're, that's pretty normal, but it was different. And um, well, now I know that because that was my first time, but um, unfortunately in the classroom, there was a group of friends and they were friends of a person who this had just happened to the friends the friend their partner had threatened suicide because they wanted to leave and they did it and this was at the beginning of the school year and the student yeah so the whole school the friends in the classroom the, the class was was like distraught they were so upset um because we didn't know coming in that this had just happened but it affects the whole community it, it affects everyone and it's not just an issue. You know, we talk about domestic violence as being or dating violence as like a private issue that, you know, doesn't, not really my business. It only concerns those two people, right? But that's not true. Dating violence and domestic violence affect the entire community. And I just want people to know that they're not alone in that. You're right. You're right. I mean, suicide is a very, very serious threat, no matter what, if you look at it that way. Mm -hmm. uh if you know basically it's a huge red flag even if they intend to uh, to follow through with it with it with a threat suicidal threat in my opinion still might be a sign of increasing violence with it with it with a relationship so you can't really ignore it mm -hmm. you have to put your best version of yourself to work with a, I, I can even suggest, actually, I just thought about the seconds ago, a domestic violence advocate. How about that? Mm -hmm. I think a domestic violence advocate can help you create a safety plan. Mm -hmm. And actually, we, we have that services in, in, in our agency as well. So uh, do that as soon as possible. It's basically part of the toolkit that I, I would suggest to, to people that are listening today. Uh, mm -hmm. Don't feel ashamed to seek out help. And uh, don't don't feel don't feel alone. If you feel alone, there's resources out there, including us. Absolutely, I think that's a great. Let's let's wrap up on on some of the things people can do. That's a great point. Um, 
Uh, I want people to know when when you think about this that it's not your fault. If your partner decides to go through with suicide, if your partner threatens it, it's not your fault. Um, that is their individual decision. And we can't, unfortunately, sometimes people are going to make decisions that are not good and are not healthy and are not safe. And we cannot control another person's decision. What we can control is our own safety. Um, and, and that's why I think Victor, you brought up like getting, you know, getting help. So first of all, like you mentioned before, the national suicide and crisis lifeline is 988. Um, I will also say like you, I think you mentioned this earlier too, is get someone else involved right away. You may need to call 911. Um, if you're afraid to call 911 and you're, you know, worried or concerned, do it with somebody else, get a trusted adult, get a friend who, you know, is supportive, um, to, to sit with you. Right. And to do, you don't have to do it by yourself is my point. Right. But you need to, you need to get this person support. Um, and it's not your responsibility to solve their problems. Um, but just know that, you know, those things are, it's really important to get, get help. Um, who, who else can people talk to maybe in the aftermath of not necessarily someone I mean, it could be someone who actually went through suicide, but like, wh who are some other people, Victor, that, you know, teens can reach out to for support um, later on? I think a trusted adult. I think a, maybe perhaps in this particular setting, uh, uh, if, if, if they feel comfortable, the school counselor, most schools have counselors inside, social workers inside the school. Uh, and obviously uh, their own parents too. Mm -hmm. Uh you shouldn't think that this is something that you can tackle on your own. Uh, he may not be actually, uh, uh, he may not be, you, you may not have the experience to deal with something like this and it can become overwhelming. So there's nothing wrong with asking for help. Whoever that person might be to you, it could be your best friend, mm -hmm. your parents, the, the counselor, like I said, the school social worker, just do that so that everything is all out in the open and you don't feel that you're by yourself in this situation because it's a very, very delicate situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And even after leaving a relationship that's abusive, you know, some things that we recommend are spending time doing things you love with people who support you, like your friends, hopefully, or your family, like, you know, um, finding support in, in those ways. So I'll also mention our, hop, our hotline. You know, some people call us for years, um, after they've left or after a sexual assault or after something has happened um, for support. And that's why we're here. So the Safe and Sound Somerset 24-7 helpline is confidential. And the number is 866-685-1122. And if you're watching this video, the number's at the bottom of the screen. Um, but just know, like, I think you said this too, Victor, is like, there are people out there who want to support you. You do not have to go through this alone. You deserve to leave. If you want to, you you deserve a happy, safe relationship. Um, and you don't have to stay just because your partner is threatening you. That is not the case. Um, so, Victor, is there anything else you wanted to add before we wrap up today? Sure. This is actually resonating in my brain right now. Uh, I would like to add, finally, from my thoughts, that if something negative were to happen, if even if your partner does decide to harm themselves or your friend or whoever it is, even though you were a support system, no, it is not your fault. That's what I want to say. It is not your fault. The outcome, as painful and confusing as it is, in the midst of you being a support system, it is not your fault. Thank you so much totally agree with you. Um, and on that note, I think we'll wrap up for today. Um, just know that there's support out there for you. So thank you so much, Victor, for, for sharing your thoughts on this really important topic today. Thank you for having me today.